Hey guys, Rob Shoecraft here with Three Storm Fitness. And this morning or today or whatever you're watching this, I'm going to show you seven chest press machine exercises. That, uh, alternatives, if you're, if you're maybe going through a program, maybe you bought a program online and it's calling for uh, four sets of eight chest press machine and you don't have one of those, or it's always taken at your gym, these are some things that kind of get the uh, get the juices flowing as substitutions. Now, <clears throat> like I said, there's seven of them, and I rant and I ramble, and I go into a lot of details. So if you want to jump around the in the description, I'll set up chapters. You can jump right to the exercises. I'm also going to talk about a ton of gear in this, a ton of different equipment. I'm going to reference different videos. I'll put all that in the description. So check it out. Of course, subscribe and like, and all those things that. Uh, that, that helped me out, right? Hopefully it helps you out too. So let's get down to it. First, I wanted to discuss real quickly why I chose these exercises. And then if you were to Google like chest press machine alternatives, I can't freaking say that. I need to come up with a different title. Um, <laughs> you would find like, it'd be like dumbbell flies or like, you know, bench dips and stuff like that. All good exercises, but really not a true, in my opinion anyway, uh, machine alternative. I've picked these out because it, this is a lot, if you see on my leg press, uh, leg press alternative video, a uh, very similar uh, set of characteristics for these exer exercise selection. One, it's gotta work the chest, right? And that description I just used about like doing the bench uh, dips, that's mainly triceps, right? So you get a lot of these, you're not really working the chest. Somebody's just lazy and they want to get a bunch of clicks, right? Uh, not me, I'm the real deal, right? So it actually works what it says it will. Uh, number two, it's safe. And what I mean is not necessarily safe for like shoulder mobility and, and restrictions, that sort of thing, right? I'm talking about safe like it won't kill you, right? That's the nice thing about machines is generally speaking, you're not gonna be eating iron like you wouldn't maybe under a, like a, a traditional bench press. And then number three, it's easily incremental. All right, so uh, it's important to log, see where you are in your progress. You know, on a machine, you just take the little pin out, pop it in. It's very easy to see, five pounds, 10 pounds, et cetera. You wanna kind of capture the essence in, in, uh, with all these exercises. Some of them might not meet all three. Some of them might be like two-ish, right? But that's kind of what I'm using as a guide to select these. So, on with the show, huh? But it would be an absolute sin to not include them in any program that claims to be working your chest that does not include them is not a good program, in my opinion, right? And that is dips. Good old fashioned dips are, I would say king of the chest exercises, personally. Just like I, you know, I'm kind of old school in that appeal. I like the leanness of, uh, of body weight exercises, but really they're truly effective for building a strong chest, strong triceps. I feel the same way about pull-ups. If, if you know the whole, well, if you were on an island and you could only pick two exercises to do for the rest of your life for your upper body, I'd probably pick dips and pull-ups. Really, I mean, you could, you could progress, you could regress, and you could just build a, a pretty banging bod off of just these things. So we're gonna talk about dips. This is a Rogue Matador. It just hooks into the infinity holes. I like, I bought it a long time ago. Well, actually one of the first videos I did. It's a crappy video, um, but <laughs> it's a great product. Uh, just hooks onto your power rack. You don't have to have one of these. I've also done a video on, um, if you wanted to get those the beautiful shot of those rings right there. I also did a video on uh, the difference between ring dips and you know straight bar dips, which I would consider these. And I won't get into the weeds on that. I prefer ring dips, but for like a machine experience, man, these are the way to go. Now, I've not warmed up at all today. If you can't do dips, right? These, by the way, bands, every single thing I hold, I've done some video on and I'm, I'm, I'm hawking it. But that's, that's the same with these. These are $2 movers bands. I'm trying to, I'm a movers band of evangelist. I'm trying to get the word out um, to the world on what a, what a sweet deal those are. Anyways, you've probably seen these before, but you could step on the band. Maybe you can't do a full dip or you're kind of cold like I am. Anyways, I'm not going to do like a full dip instructional video necessarily, but for hammering the chest, you got, you got two main different kinds of dips, right? First, you got the 
kind of, I guess, the upright tricep dip, okay? Where you're more, the more upright you are in a dip, the more you tend to hit the triceps. Now, I should say, squeeze your shoulder blades back, no matter what you're doing, retract your scapula when you're doing dips, or you don't want to be inner, uh, internally rotated. Um, so, uh, but to hit the chest, we're going to go up, and I'm going to kind of get a bit of a forward lean, kind of going over it. Going down, back up. And man, there's just, honestly, there's nothing better for the chest, in my opinion. If you want to ramp it up a little bit, of course, you just add weight. That checks the increment box, right? So this is a, uh, you know, of course you could use like a, this is just a Harbinger dip belt right here, classic chain. See that little, I'll grab a 35 here. After all, I just did three reps. That's a great warm up. I just looped this thing through here. I like this thing a lot. It's a round sling. It's used on like, uh, I don't know what they actually use it for. I think they put it on like cranes and wrap up cargo. I got a real big one back there. I did a video one time. It's like 14 uses for the round sling. I think I got this for seven bucks. They're probably more expensive now because I talked about it, you know how that goes. Um, but <laughs> you put this around here, put this on here. Now I got weighted dips, right? <laughs> Same thing. And I like to have my feet in the front. Just puts less stress on the back. If you don't have the clearance for it though, you can put your feet behind you. Not a big deal. All right, so dips. Oh, one more little bonus, bonus exercise. You know, I'm a big uh, John Meadows fan, rest in peace. Got this one off of him, they're called Peck Minor Dips. A little more, uh, require a nice uh, mind muscle connection. But if you wanna really target the Peck Minor, these are great. You go up, lock it out, and you're gonna kinda shrug your shoulders, and then you're gonna push through the handles and squeeze. So you're targeting, it's almost like an inverted shrug. Targeting that pec minor. Could be a nice way to kind of end a uh, dip session. A little bonus. This next exercise, kind of like dips, it's a classic. It's push-ups, but it's, it's push-ups with a little bit of a twist. And I call them dingle presses, and they are named after Dr. Barry Dingle, who is the, uh, Rory, do you know? He's the father of modern no, I do. dingle pressing, Rory. <laughs> He's the father of modern dingle pressing. These are uh, weighted push-ups. Weighted push-ups are a fantastic exercise. The problem with weighted push-ups, and what I, what I mean is, you know, you see videos, they, they look more like, they're almost like, they're almost like gimmicky, right? Because you got a drum roll and the dude just stacking weights on a guy's back and it's a huge pain in the butt. Um, number one, you get them on your small, your back, and now it's kind of more of like a core workout where you're kind of just fighting gravity. You're not really putting it over your chest. Uh, number two, they're sliding off. Number three, uh, you have, you have to have a partner who wants to sit there and be like your freaking circus assistant, right? It's just, they're not, they're not practical, but again, they are fantastic exercise and they're, they're relatively cheap and easy. So I was sitting in the gym and I was, I really want to do some weighted pushups. I really want to fetishize over my hammock straps some more. What can I do? Ah, I remember Barry Dingle, Dingle presses, right? It looks like a dingle bear. There's no Barry Dingle. Spoiler alert. Sorry, sorry, Rory, I lied to you. Uh, this is just kind of like a homemade loading pen. Any kind of strap at all that's heavy duty nylon. I've made probably 15 videos at this point over the same thing, but I'm gonna do it again. You put like a little two and a half pound plate in. This is kind of like the little stopper at the bottom. And I take any sort of loading strap. It could be uh, one, if it's just, I'll link to some videos, you'll see what I mean. It's really simple. You do it over under knot, the Roy taught me, um, at camp. And you got this little, little thing hanging down here. And, and now, well, as you'll see, you can load plates on it. Okay, so 
I'm going to put a bumper plate down, a rubber bumper plate. And the reason for that is I'm going to have this on my back and I don't want it to slip and slide. Now you could do this with regular plates just fine, but these will have a little more bite to them and they're just kind of nicer, right? And I'm going to slide underneath this all awkwardly. It's going to make kind of goofy sounds on the microphone, I'm sure. I don't want to hit my head. If I do, I mean, I've done it. It's not a big deal, but you, know, you might as well kind of pamper yourself, right? I put this in. Let's 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 sex it up a little bit, right? Let's put uh, put another plate on here. Put a let's let's make it a little more weight. It's hanging right at. If you look, this is the. I basically what I did was I got under this thing one day, and I just took the bottom position of where I am in the push up, and I just kind of got right up to which hole was closest to it, and then. I corresponded the correspondence with the hole on here based on the length on here. You don't have to have hammock straps to do this. You don't have to. All you need to do is have something that's going to hold weight in a fixed position. It could be a barbell sitting here with a tiny little strap connected to it. The strap only needs to be about the length of your upper arm, right? Because it only needs to move this much. I guess that'd be your lower arm. But you know what I'm saying. It's, it's not rocket science, guys. Just, just mess around with it. Um, so you get up underneath this thing. And it's going to look like I've never done this before. I swear I have. It's just there's no, there's no <laughs> nice way to do it. But I'm going to get underneath. I'm going to put this behind my head. And it's got to go over the back like over your, your shoulders, because that's where you want the pressure or the resistance. All right. And you could do, you could put low. Well, let me do, let me do some first. I've been talking the whole time. All right. So I get to a push up position. Right. You get these sweet weighted push ups. And honestly, they're killer, man. This is, I'm kind of doing like a high and then you slide out of it, whatever. You get caught in your hood. Look like an idiot. It's all part, all part of the workout. I kind of do it almost like a guillotine press. If you're familiar with the, the guillotine press, where I'm really kind of hammering the chest specifically. But do whatever push-up variation you want. Just fool around with where the weight sits. If you want, excuse me. If you wanted to, if you wanted to, you could get like a uh, couple center blocks. Ah, those things. In case you know what center blocks are, you need some center blocks or perfect push ups or probably even like rings or something if you really want to dial in and get even deeper into the push up, a deeper stretch. Haven't done that yet, but I don't see any reason why that wouldn't work. Any reason why that wouldn't be a great exercise. Okay, so this next thing is going to be d uh, dumbbell presses. Now, dumbbell, flat bench, incline bench, whatever, amazing for chest development. Usually easier on the shoulders. In most cases, you can get a nice deep stretch. All the good things, you guys know what dumbbells are. We want to have a nice pain-free lifting experience while blasting our chest as if we were on a machine. So, uh, they make these great little things called spotter arms for dumbbells. And these uh, spot grips, back when they released these, was so nice to send these to me. Test out, I think this was kind of like a factory second, but it still worked great. And then they still work great, by the way. So thank you for sending these to me, I do love them. That being said, they are very expensive. Uh, I'm assuming they still sell them. Anyways, you grab them and you, you, you kind of go up and down. You'll see how they work in a moment. Uh, but, so you, this is, I would consider this like the Rolls Royce of d dumbbell spotter arms, right? Then you go down a notch to like, what do they call them, Mad Dog. There's a lot of different, a uh, lot of different dumbbell, like fixed, where you hang, they hang from a barbell. You've probably seen them. I think Mad Dog, I've seen, I've used the Mad Dog dumbbell ones before, and they're, I think that's what they're called. I don't have them, but they're pretty cool. Uh, so I'm going to show you the, how these work, and then I'm going to show you uh, kind of a refreshed video that I did a while back that people seem to think was really cool. I thought it was cool too is how you can uh, kind of recreate the, uh, these spotter arms with, you guessed it, hammock straps. Okay, so uh, first I want to talk about a lot of times when people, you know, tell you to, to use these, you see people using these 
on their pull-up bars, which is fine, totally fine. Pull-up bars will hold the weight and they'll do the job. The issue is when you get some big mothers in place, big dumbbells in place, and you're in the middle of a set, you're clanging up against this because it's in the same plane as the power rack. So what I've decided to do is get a barbell at the top of the power rack or wherever you see fit. So it's a little outside of the rack. And now when it hangs down, it's not, it clears, it clears the rack. And the way I have it sitting, I don't know if you can get that, Rory, war dog, but it's sitting kind of on here. Well, I just bundled a bunch of bands, again, $2 bands, <laughs> um, to the top of it so that, yeah, it'll, it'll go, but when you, when you put weight on it, it just keeps it in place. I'm not worried about it. I haven't had an accident yet. So let me demonstrate real quick these spot grips because they are super cool, and I want to give them some props. You can check out my review that I did on them. My review kind of sucked, but they showcase the product quite well. They do not work, at least last I checked, which is probably three years ago at this point, two years ago anyway. They don't work with power blocks. Don't just leave. I had uh, one humble brag, but had uh, 125 pounds loaded up. I was doing these uh, a few months ago and I just left them in because I'm the only one who uses it. Well, my wife decided to come down and do, an, uh, do a workout and she, she didn't know how these worked. So she hits the latch and 125 pounds just comes flying down. Caught it right the last second, but it came out and crushed her toe. She, <laughs> she was not happy with me. So I get it on this thing. The nice thing about spot grips that I don't know if anything else has is you could set it up in the top position. All right, so I hit these levers. These things weigh about 10 pounds each, by the way. So if, if your weight feels different on them, that's why. Um, so you can set it at the top position so you can let it go and get it into place. And again, you see what I mean with the rack. It's not getting in the way. All right, so nice. However, how, you know, however you want to do it, it's a dumbbell press. All right, and when you're done, you just let go and they dangle there. Not dingle, they dangle. It's not a dingle press, it's a dangle press. They're cool, and again, they meet the safety requirement, the incremental requirement, and they surely hit your chest. They're cool, if you got them, use them, they're really rad. I made my first video on these spotter arm, DIY spotter, hammock strap spotter arms, dangle presses, not dingle. That's not gonna get old at all. I use these guys, and these are uh, endless loops. I think Spud Inc. is who made this. They're like five bucks. They're, they're really they're they're great for a million different things. The problem was they only fit around a certain size dumbbell. They're just not that big, right? And you can put a carabiner in here and do the same thing to get a little more extension. So one of the most frequent comments on the video was, "Have you ever figured out how to do it with a bigger uh, dumbbell?" And yes, it's really easy. Just get a bigger loop, all right? So now I got a bigger loop here. You put this, you get this in place about, about, about as low as you want it to be at the, at the end range of motion. And which is in this case, check my notes, full eight, this guy. So I feed this through till it's about equidistant, okay? And I'll, slide this over here and I'll feed it through the little feed the big thing through the little thing that's bigger than my other thing not that thing Rory come on okay so now it just chills here look at that and so I left myself just a little uh little hand from where my hands go okay I get on here and I'll just do like a one, uh, one arm press, but you could just imagine if I had two, okay? Boom. 
And you can do this with shoulder presses, any, really anything. You can do this with rows if you want to. It's sweet. This is 85 pounds, by the way. It probably looks a lot wider, <laughs> but it's 85 pounds. This is cool. This is really cool. This next one is a landmine chest press. This is a classic one you've probably seen before if you're familiar with landmine stuff. And again, I'm just totally obsessed with, with landmines and hammock straps. And I really, I just, I used to think I was just being annoying talking about them all the time, but uh, I need to keep talking about them. They're great, man. They, they're cheap. They give you a million different exercises you could do. This is a, uh, this is a landmine. Yeah, that's good. This is a landmine chest press. Now you've seen landmine chest presses before probably, or people go like this. You got this, right? This is like your classic landmine press. Fantastic exercise, for one of the best for shoulder development, triceps, etc. Not so much a chest exercise though. You come in here, center it, you got closer to a chest exercise, still pretty tricep-y though, if we're being honest, um, which is very important in today's world. So I got the landmine strap on here, got the pin pipe pivot. You could use a, a, a you know, your classic, uh, I should have nine of them around here. You know, the grapplers, the big, oh, yeah, those little guys, you can get those. Yeah, those little guys, right? You could use those, it doesn't matter. Set it up in place. You don't have to have a hammock strap. I just like it because I'm lazy. So this exercise here where you kind of do like a little tulip, I see people doing like grabbing it like a hoagie, right? That's okay, but you kind of got a little bit of like the, the deadlift dilemma with the over under grip where you sort of a little uh, asymmetrical, I suppose, if you really want to get uh, picky, right? So I like the tulip grip, kind of like a goblet squat. And you could press it like so. Now, it's pretty tricep-y, like I said, right? It hits the chest a little bit. If you wanna make it a chest exercise, it's gonna require a little bit of discipline on your part. Very similar to like a squeeze press or a crush press with dumbbells, where you jam them together and you're actively pressing the whole time and you go through the motion. You know, I'm on my back right now. Or sometimes you see that with like squeeze presses uh, with the plates, you know, you know what I'm talking about, Roy? Yeah, great like for like inner chest development, especially. It just gets like a really net, or at the top of a push up, if you kind of do just one little extra, boom, kind of like that pec minor dip we were doing. Um, this is the same sort of thing. So it's gonna require, like I said, a little bit of discipline from you to, put, to press, try to crush the bar in between your hands. So when you press, coming down and it gets oh my gosh man it's sweet you can go staggered stance if you want to i really don't think it matters in this case this isn't like a max out type exercise this is like a end of a chest day leave with a sick pump you know peck pop in the mirror put some old spice on and scream all right that's what this is so these next two um, I'm not going to set it up today just because I, we, Rory and I just made a video uh, a couple weeks ago and I, it's just this video doesn't need to be any longer than I'm sure it's already going to be. So Rory being the expert editor that he is, is just going to start showing some uh, B-roll footage if you will. All right. But I want to talk about it. these next two, we've got like a, like a hammer press, a uh, hammer strength press. I always call it a hammer strength press just because we've got a million of them at the gym. And everybody wants a hammer strength, right? They're, they're great. Um, it, it puts, it's very similar to that. You got like an incline bench set up and you have, I use these gnarly handles or righteous handles. If you're, if you're uh, a high roller, you want to get a good ones. These are just tight and gnarly handles. They're great in either case. Um, you can do all sorts of grip variations. And then we have different mixes of landmine. We got for one of them, I got to use a, just the pin pipe pivot on the safety bar, or you could use, if you got two like uh, fat stacks of like, you know, whatever on the floor, you could do double landmines. But this is the thing about these, they require really a lot of equipment. Um, power, you pretty much have to have a power rack or something that's bolted down. You got to have two barbells. You got to have some sort of attachment. You don't, you don't, you could just grip the, the sleeves themselves, but it's cooler with this. Um, and then you gotta have 
the landmine action. And then I recommend, recommend hammock straps or handy system as well. You could use boxes, of course, uh, or anything just to kind of keep the barbells in place um, between sets. That being said, it's very involved. They are fantastic exercises though. And if you're really after like that true machine experience, you're basically creating a machine is what you're doing. Um, so it's, uh, it's really great. It's a great system. I'm just not gonna set it up today because I gotta, I gotta, get, to, uh, I gotta get to work, right? So the last thing I'm gonna do, a little less equipment, still very, very machine-like experience. I did a video on this a while back. This is kind of like a version 2.0 or 1.1. And really the main difference is before I used a straight bar, today I'm gonna to use a uh, Swiss bar. All right, an angled Swiss bar. This is a Black Widow Swiss bar, killer piece of equipment. I absolutely love this thing, love it very much. Any Swiss bar you have though is gonna work. I'm gonna slide it in the corner. Boom. I'm going to bring these out outside. You'll see why in a minute. And then I'm going to take my Swiss bar and I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to do some, uh, inverted style because it kind of, I feel like it hits like a little bit of the lower chest a little bit more and it's just kind of neat. It's just different, right? Different could be good. It's spice of life and whatnot. All right, so I'm gonna bring this guy out. And I just wrap my leg around it. Love it. Massage it. <laughs> <laughs> You're naughty. Oh, crap. <laughs> 12, where's my 12? All right, so you see, I got this little uh, tape at the bottom here, so I, so I know, I know where about where I need this to be. I'm gonna put a bumper plate behind this, so when I get into the seat, it doesn't tip. Now I'll just throw some weight on there too, and I'll put a little little one behind this, kind of chalking it. But if you watch my original video. If, if I were to hang it from here, if I were to hang the hammock straps from here, I wouldn't have any starting resistance because it's just hang, hanging vertically. Very, very little starting resistance. You don't really get much resistance until the top of the movement when gravity starts taking over. When I put it back here, I get immediate resistance right off the gate. All right, this takes actually a little bit of effort to do that. So I have it jammed up Against, it'd be nice of me and responsible. It'd probably be cool to put some tape or rubber on here just so I don't destroy it, but I like the look of destroyed things. Um, so I get this in the position I want. We'll throw some weight on here. And you know, with the Swiss bar, you could use, you could flip this upside down and do it the right way. Like I said, I'm just kind of getting, just messing with something a little different. I'm gonna get in here, and this is one reason I put the plates in the back. It's because my big fat butt kind of gets in the way as I'm sitting down and I would flip the bench if I wasn't, but then put that in place. Okay, so it's sitting right here. And you gotta just, you know, depending on what kind of exercise you're doing, you wanna mess with it, get it right. Uh, and of course, write it down. If you're using hammock straps, tape them up or use numbers or whatever, uh, just so you don't have to do all this again. I'm gonna put my foot in here. And the reason for that is if I was using crazy weight, and I wish a lot of machines had, a lot of, most machines don't have this functionality. It's kind of irks me a little bit. Where, you know, if you're starting or doing a heavy set on a machine, you gotta start from the bottom. And man, sometimes it could just, it, depending on where you are in your, in your, uh, in your workout, it, it's like doing a pin press. It just kind of agitates your shoulders. It's tough to start it. So I like this. I kind of give myself like a self spotting, put my foot in here. And I, I'm gonna do this inside grip. Because I found this is a nasty little chest, chest pump. So I'll give, give myself a little leg press. Get it into place, put, kick my foot out. Right, 
of course I could do this from, from any, any position, or I could flip it. <laughs> Maybe outside. I can put my foot in there if I want. I, I got this though, Roy, don't worry about it. All right, put my feet fixed in the good position. Lock it, lock the shoulders in. Big breath, show me how fat you are. Yes, sir. Bam. And it's a nice angle too. It kind of goes up, so it's kind of riding the like cam of your scapula, the way it turns, so I'm told. And then just, you can just kind of, you know, chill here. A little shelf, get a little mojito. You like that? All right, so hopefully those, uh, some of those exercises helped you out. Of course, that's just, a, that's just seven exercises of probably seven dozen that you could do as a substitute. But again, I'm just trying to get the, we'll just keep saying juices flowing. I'm just getting juices flowing. That's all we're really doing here. Guys, lift safely. If you have some good ideas, I really do want to hear them. Hopefully, uh, I see your comment and I get back to you and we can, we can have this little collaboration, right? But uh, in the meantime, try it out. Let me know what you think. Um, again, I put links to all this stuff in the bottom, including um, timestamps. And uh, like and subscribe. Have a great day. Thank you very much.